was originally hatched in Rome, the Pazzi, with the support of the Pope, Federico da Montefeltro, Giovan Battista da Montesecco, and the Archbishop of Pisa, Salviati, are gonna get rid of Lorenzo, overthrow his corrupt government, bring freedom back to the Republic. At least, their idea of freedom. But how are we actually gonna get rid of him? Right then, I knew I had to smoke his ass. Easier said than done. If we get rid of him, we gotta get rid of his brother. If we don't get rid of his brother, his brother's gonna take his place. So we gotta get rid of both, Lorenzo and Giuliano. I mean, we're talking about the Medici. They have an entourage, they have security guns. They live in a palazzo that's like a fortress. You can't just knock on the door and be like, knock, knock, bang, bang. The plan, the plan has to be foolproof. It has to be airtight. It has to be tight as a motherfucker. And above all, no one can see this coming. So basically, after all this brainstorming in the Apostolic Palace between one Paternoster and a Hail Mary, they come to a conclusion which, for the purposes of this documentary, we shall call Plan A. Now, 19th of April, in honor of little Raffaele Riario, who had just become cardinal, and of course he was the nephew of Pope Sixtus IV. I shall call him me. And in Florence, we've decided to hold all these festivities to celebrate the event. And the Medici are going to hold a massive kick-ass banquet in Fiesole. The who's who of Florentine high society are going to be there. The Pazzi, the beat, all of those rich... What's the idea? When everyone's a little bit tipsy, a little bit drunk, a little bit, you know, the dancing stars a bit... Nah, you mother... Little problem. The day before, we discover that Giuliano's not going to make it because he's sick. We can't kill one without the other, we've already said that. So we're going to have to postpone the whole thing. We're going to have to think of a whole other plan. Plan B. <laughs> the following Sunday, the Medici were going to hold yet another banquet. Love these banquets. Again, in honor of Cardinal Raffaele Diario. After the Sunday Mass, we'll have this big blowout of a lunch with wines and roast meats and all that. And again, same plan. You know, when everyone's drunk and tipsy and a little bit... Blah. Say hello to my little friend! But on the day of the banquet, guess what? We find out that Giuliano's not going to make it to that either because he's still sick. And the clock's ticking. The more we keep putting it off, the more chances we have of the plot being leaked and us being discovered and we get ourselves killed. We have to get rid of these guys, like, now. That morning, before the banquet, Giuliano is going to attend the Mass. Lorenzo's going to attend the Mass. Everyone's going to attend the Mass. That was the whole idea. The Mass and then the lunch. And okay, Giuliano's not going to make it to the lunch, but he's got to be at the Mass. He just has to be. It's one of the most important Masses of the year. And that's when they're going to kill him and his brother. And of course, it's not just any church. It's the Cathedral. Santa Maria del Fiore. And at what moment of the Mass are we going to kill these guys? During the raising of the host. The holiest moment of the Mass. The host goes up. The daggers come down. Genius. What could possibly go wrong? Quite a few things. But anyway, let's begin at the beginning. 1478, 26th of April. We're all there, we're all in church. We're sitting in our pews waiting for the mass to begin. You know, Bernardo Bandini, one of the Pazzi uh, allies, and Francesco de Pazzi are looking around. They realize something. Giuliano's not here. Lorenzo's there, he's sitting in his place, but where the f*** is Giuliano? Shit, he's not here. Okay, okay, okay. You know what, let's go and get him. The Palazzo Medici is just around the corner. It literally is. It's like a stone's throw. So they leave the cathedral before the mass begins. There's minutes to go. They rush the Palazzo Medici and they knock on the door and say, Hey, Giuliano, what are you doing, man? Come to the mass. You know, you're missing out, man. It's full of hot chicks. I mean, this is what Machiavelli says. Machiavelli the door. According to Machiavelli, Bernardo Manini and Francesco Pazzi convinced the sick Giuliano to leave his sick bed and go to church just to feast on Florentine eye candy. The fact of the matter is, they get him out of the palazzo, they're walking him to the cathedral, and as they do, they're frisking him. Now, of course, they're joking, saying, hey, Giuliano, you're going to see these hot babes, blah, blah, blah. But really what they want to do is see if he's wearing any chain mail or leather protective gear, you know, think Assassin's Creed. That's essentially the, you know, the bulletproof vests of the Renaissance. And he's not. Great, it's gonna be even easier to kill. So Giuliano's in, in church. He's sitting down. 
The mass begins. All we have to do is wait for the communion wafer to go up and we're gonna be serving up some dead Medici for lunch. When the communion wafer goes up, the daggers start coming down. And in fact, Giuliano, in the space of 30 seconds, was stabbed 19 times. Francesco De Pazzi actually stabbed into him so hard that he stabbed himself in the leg. But anyway, that's not the problem. Giuliano's dead, great. Little issue, Lorenzo, who was the real target. The guy who was meant to kill Lorenzo, Giovanni Battista da Montesecco, one of the deadliest men in Italy, had quit just before the mass began. Why? Because despite being a professional killer, at the end of the day, he was a good Catholic. I'm not gonna kill anyone in church during mass. That's where I draw the line. I can kill your baby, I can kill your grandfather, I can kill you anywhere, but I will not kill in church. I'm sorry. So he quits. We gotta find a replacement. Quick, smart. And it's not like there's like an adeco where you can just go and ring, ring someone up and say, oh, I need a killer in the cathedral for an assassination plot like in five minutes. No, so we need to find a replacement. And among the posse, there was actually two priests. We hired two priests to get rid of the Renzo. On the surface, it seemed like a great idea. Who's going to expect two priests? Yeah, Lorenzo will be sitting there. He's got two priests behind him. He's not going to think, oh, someone's going to kill me. But the priests, they've never killed anyone before. They've got a clue, so they're fumbling. Lorenzo gets his sword out. He fights them off. Lorenzo's friends and bodyguards see that Giuliano's dead. They grab Lorenzo. They start to drag him to the sacristy to get him to safety. Bernardo Bandini and Francesco De Pazzi, they see that Lorenzo's getting away. They're like, shit, we got to kill him. And they run after Lorenzo. They run like lightning. They're almost there. They've almost gotten to stabbing him. And Bernardo Bandini's blade is poisoned. But as he was about to go for the final lunch, Francesco Nori, Lorenzo's trusted friend, and in this case, bodyguard, turns around and takes it. Think Kevin Costner in the body. And I will always love you. And he dies to protect his master. But just in that split second, the doors of the sacristy were closed. These thick, heavy bronze doors, once they're closed, there's no opening them. The Pazzi have succeeded in killing Giuliano. Lorenzo's still alive. Big mistake. 